It brings me a lot of joy to be re reunited with my climate family today from all over the world fighting for climate justice, but underneath that joy is a very deep anger that has been simmering because this feels like deja vu. In 2019, we marched because we knew it was zero hour to act on the climate crisis. There was no more time. I was wearing these same hoops and this same shade of lipstick and marching in the streets of New York City, doing the same chants, looking out at a sea of people very similar thinking, very similar to, to all of us today, thinking there's no way they're going to ignore us now. They have to listen to us, right? There's no way they can ignore us, but they did. The fossil fuel industry and our leadership didn't just not take action. I get very annoyed when people say inaction because inaction implies that they're doing nothing. When in reality, our leaders in the fossil fuel industry is actively making the climate crisis worse, actively polluting and actively killing people. And we need to call that destruction what it is. It's not climate inaction, it's active and purposeful destruction. They know what they're doing. Exxon knew decades ago, long before I was born, they knew. These fossil fuel corporations have blood on their hands and our government is funding the destruction and sickness and death of its own people. Joe Biden and every politician who sits in office claiming that you care about the youth, that you love your children and grandchildren, why are you funding their destruction? The United States spends billions with a B, at least 40 billion on fossil fuel subsidies. This is our tax dollars, the tax dollars that you all pay paying for climate change, pollution, and oil spills caused by corporate negligence. Our money is going to fund the fossil fuel industry and our tax dollars should not be funding our debts. Politicians and corporate leaders out there claiming that you care about your children, posing in all of these political ads, holding babies, saying that they're so pro-life apparently, but then they go around actively destroying life on earth. That is not love. That is not love for your children. Because real love is making the sacrifices that you need so that your children can survive. Your words might sound nice, but money speaks louder. And right now, where you're putting your money and our tax dollars that we pay, and you're investing them into your own people's sickness, suffering, and death. Joe Biden and everyone in office, if you actually care like you say you do, end fossil fuel subsidies now. Now, a lot has changed since the pre-pandemic climate strike. Um, I think we should acknowledge the pandemic and how it threw all of our lives in places I don't think most of us were expecting them to go. On a personal level, um, the, this pandemic um, changed a lot for me. I came of age during the pandemic. I graduated high school, moved to New York, and started adulting, whatever that is, um, and, and was forced to grow up fast. Battles that I didn't choose found me, and I've learned to be stronger and more resilient than I ever thought imaginable. I was confronted with tragedy. My grandpa died of COVID, and my friend and NYU classmate, Farbin Tauhid, was murdered. Um, these two deaths in my life really sent me to a very dark place, and after overcoming a lot of grief, I'm not the same 17 year old wearing the, the same hoops, even though I'm wearing the same hoops and the same lipstick that I was wearing then, I've grown up and my patience has worn thinner. I have seen more of the world and I also have way less patience for any bullshit because there are so, pardon my French, I know there are children here, I apologize um, for swearing, but I don't have any more patience for inaction. I don't have any more patience for lies, I don't have any more patience because there are so many people who should have been here alive with us today, whether it be because they died of this preventable pandemic because of leadership and not taking action on the pandemic, whether it was because we lost them due to the climate crisis or due to preventable gun violence, people are dying because of the negligence of our leaders. I'm 19 years old, I turned 20 in December, and ever since I was 14, I've heard every type of person in power tell me, keep up the great work for our planet while they continue to actively destroy it. So when I was, 
When I was 14 years old, a freshman in high school, trying to figure out who I was in this world, what I would hear from leaders who had the power, who had the funding is, oh, it's so cool you're doing this work. 15 years old, wow, keep it up, so impressive. 16 years old, still fighting, still doing everything, sacrificing so much, burning myself out, overworking myself. Leaders that could actually change laws and turn this crisis around, telling a sophomore in high school who's taking am I gay quizzes on the internet that she's the one who's responsible for solving the climate crisis when they're the ones who could pass the laws and write executive orders if they felt like it. So, I'm tired. I don't want trophies. I don't want a picture that's like, oh my God, you're so cute. That's so great that you're taking climate action. 17 years old, 18 years old, that's so great that you're doing this work. Here's a trophy and yet no action. And now I'm 19 and it's the same thing. It has been years and years of this throughout my entire high school life and now in college and now I'm in my second year of college and it's the same thing. Our leaders are so impressed with the fact that young people have the ability to talk that they're not actually listening to what we're saying and the words that are coming out of our mouths. They're taking pictures. Wow, they're marching. It's so cool. Hashtag climate action. And then they go turn around and continue to fund the fossil fuel industry. Basically, my whole teenage life has been people acting fake impressed at myself and my peers about how cute it is that we're speaking up instead of listening to the words that were coming out of our mouths in every language across the world right now, as people are marching and striking, because it's not just here in New York City, it is all over the world and we are in global solidarity. We are all have been saying the same thing for years and years, to be given a chance to live on an earth that is habitable. Is that too much to ask for? Is that too much to ask for? 